All right, welcome to the playlist on waves and oscillations. And in this video, we're going to be introducing some of the fundamental concepts of oscillations and waves. So the general idea behind a wave or an oscillation is that it is a periodic motion, which means that it is repeating over time. So to give you an example of that, consider a pendulum that is swinging back and forth. So we know that the pendulum is going to go from side to side and if we assume that there's no air resistance or no friction on the hinge and nothing else actually acting on the system other than just its free fall, then we know that it is going to keep oscillating from one side to the other uh, forever. So essentially that would be a, a non-practical uh, scenario because we know that in reality there's always going to be some uh, loss of energy to the environment, being in the form of friction or air resistance or whatever kind of damping that may be acting on the system. But if we consider an ideal system in which no energy is being lost to the environment in any form, then what we would see is some kind of waveform that actually goes um, back and forth over time. And this is essentially what we see when we plot something that is akin to simple harmonic motion. So the general idea behind an oscillation or wave is that it can often be represented by either a sine or a cosine function. The next thing is that it has two characteristics. The first one is the amplitude, which is the maximum value of the peaks. So generally the peaks go up and down, so the value over here would be A as well. And we call A the amplitude of the wave. Then the next thing is the period big T. So the period is the distance or the amount of time it takes for the oscillation or the system to complete one full cycle. So in this case, when the pendulum goes to the left, that essentially would be going to one side. So that would be half of a period. And then once it gets back to its original position, that completes one full cycle. So we would be back at the beginning. And generally we define it as the distance in time from a peak to another peak on the same side of the graph. Now the period is connected to something called the angular frequency of the oscillation and essentially the relationship is to pi omega. So in this case it would, this would correspond to a sine function since we're starting off at zero and then we can represent that by the amplitude times the function itself and then the angular frequency is attached to t. So this is going to determine how fast those cycles are being completed. The next thing we need to talk about is the frequency itself. So the regular frequency is the reciprocal of the period and can be also connected to the angular frequency omega. So omega is usually radians per seconds. So you can think of it as kind of a rotational frequency and frequency in itself is measured in hertz. So hertz are simply just number of oscillations, oscillations or cycles. Per second or per time period essentially so those that's how those concepts are connected and they're interchangeable but most of the time in physics you will use the angular frequency now in simple harmonic motion so what we have is we're starting off at some initial displacement x naught and then the system is going to be released so essentially imagine you're holding the pendulum at some height and then you release it and let it uh, oscillate back and forth so this is what you're going to see. Simple harmonic motion is described by a cosine function because you cannot just start it at zero and expect it to move up by itself. It is not going to move if you just release it from a vertical position here. So simple harmonic motion is actually I should simple harmonic motion is essentially the process that we observe in physics on a daily basis. So everything that oscillates or that completes rotations or cycles usually follows some sort of curve like this. But of course, there are many exceptions. There are many variations on how these things can usually happen. But this is a really important concept because to give you an example, suppose you're making a building, a very tall skyscraper, but you're building it on a piece of land that is very prone to earthquakes. So there's always grand vibrations going on. Then what happens is, as, assume that this thing has many floors. Then the, connect, the connections between here essentially work like little masses attached, attached to springs. So what happens is, uh, as these vibrations on the ground get stronger and stronger, the building is going to try to bend and each floor 
is going to experience some deformation so the vibrations will be transferred across the material that make up the building and so this is going to start swinging back and forth so it is essentially like a pendulum imagine you have something hanging from this from a platform here and then you start moving the platform that energy will be transferred to the pendulum and so it would start uh, oscillating back and forth at some point the same sort of concept applies to this so one of the fundamental principles in all physics and engineering is how can we use this analysis to our advantage to make sure that we can make better buildings or vehicles or machines that can reduce the effect of those external vibrations on the actual system itself so how do we design this building so that it doesn't collapse under those vibrations introduced by the environment and this is what this whole topic of analyzing vibrations and oscillation is, is, is all about we want to really know what the effect of waves and how they propagate through materials is going to what kind of effect it is going to have on the system as a whole and what kind of techniques and strategies can we implement in order to minimize those uh, effects and make better designs overall another important concept is that pretty much everything in physics can be can be modeled in the same way so for example the dynamics of molecules can be represented by little masses uh, or little particles of certain mass connected by springs and the springs represent some sort of bond so it could be a chemical bond a physical bond ionic bond covalent whatever and then we can model the the behavior or the interaction between particles based on how those vibrations or oscillations are transferred from one place to another so when you're talking about waves and vibrations think about how energy is being transferred from one place to another and there are many ways in which this happens so the main the main two ways in which this happens is via elastic propagation or elastic waves <coughs> so this includes things like sound and it is related to deformations on a material so another name that people give like, elastic waves in some sense is acoustic waves but of course those are just uh, another way of calling or saying elastic waves because sound propagates through materials and this is what causes those deformations internally that lead to this sort of uh, deformation on large structures and the other one that we have is electromagnetic waves let's just call it EM waves so these ones are very similar so, but instead of actually being a result of things compressing and extending over time as is the case of elastic waves where you have compression and uh, tension or elongation and this propagates through a material in electromagnetic waves what happens is you have some sort of uh, let's say you have some atom and you have the nucleus and then you have a bunch of electrons floating around that now what ends up happening is when you have some sort of wave essentially a wave of energy that is propagating through space because electric fields tend to displace electrons in the opposite direction then all of these electrons or the electron cloud would tend to move to the south then what happens is this creates a temporary dipole so essentially there's more concentration of electrons in on the bottom that, that is on the, than there is on the top and this in itself generates its own electric field so it becomes a dipole temporarily but because this field is oscillating back and forth in opposite directions then this is going to start oscillating back and forth as well it to, in order to adjust for that energy transfer so in itself this is going to transfer more electromagnetic radiation and it's going to radiate it outwards and if you consider an entire material then what happens is you have all these atoms floating around and then the electromagnetic energy is going to be transferred in the form of a wave so this is what we call an electromagnetic wave but we'll see that the principles are very much the same as we have with a regular mass attached to a spring and this is what this little playlist is going to be all about